Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. After working with Patania for so long and doing farming related stuff, I feel like it's time to do something different. So, now that we've advanced so far from when I last visited this idea, I want to finally capture some Ender Minis and make them a place to live. So I couldn't do that with the Golden Lasso before, if you remember right, because the Ender Minis are considered to be enemy mobs and not passive for some reason, even though they don't actually attack me. So I'm going to use Soul Vials. At the time, a long time ago, I could not make them. Oh! Oh, I think it's getting stung by bees. Oh, that's an Enderman, not an Ender Mini. Anyway, yeah, so Soul Vials I can now make. Take Solarium, which we already had, and Alf Glass. I think that was a big thing I couldn't do before. The Alf Glass is super simple at this point. It's just Mana Glass thrown into the portal to Alfheim. Made a couple. Let's grab some Ender Minis. Yeah, I think there was one down here. It may have moved. They show up on the mini-map as those little, like, red things without icons. Oh, there it is. Oh! I think it just teleported. It just teleported. It's fine. And there's an actual Enderman trying to kill me. Okay. Think I gotta do a bit of fighting. Oh, that hurt. I have, like, no armor. <laughs> I really need to make some armor. Oh, come on. Fight me. Nice our little fella. Got him! Yes! Screw you, Enderman. It's becoming day now. Yep, so we got a little Ender mini inside of the soul vial. Ah, here's two more. Look at the little fellas. Boop. And we have two. Okay, let's take him back home. So here's what I'm thinking for where my Ender Minis are going to live. I'm thinking because they're so small, they should live somewhere small too. So how about I make them a miniature version of our base? And I'm going to try to do that using a tool called the Modeling Tool from Extra Bit Manipulation. It's an add-on mod for chisel and bits. And what it, one of the things it allows you to do is scan a chunk and turn it into bits, like a smaller version. So each block will become one bit. So for example, this area here, you can see I've got the chunk boundaries on. So everything inside of this 16 by 16 is one chunk. And if we scan any area of it, you can see it makes a miniature version of it. You can see that's the, the uh, was it Sakura? Yeah, Sakura, Sakura tree. That's the base with the thatch roof and all that stuff. And you can see the substitutions for the different blocks is not exactly perfect but it looks pretty dang close and you can really see the pathway too which is really nice yeah i think it's going to look pretty fantastic now each one of these ends up being just one block big so i'm going to have to scan a pretty large area and so the way this works it's pretty complicated but the basic way it works is when you scan something it tells you all the blocks that it's going to try to replicate like, hey, you've got these architecture craft blocks, and you've got these wood blocks, and cooking for blockheads blocks, and grass and dirt and all this stuff, and you have to map it to whatever you want it to be replaced with. This sort of a system totally makes sense, given what it's actually doing, but I've got to say, if I was to actually use this, 
I would have to get the, I would have to make the bits out of all these blocks. So I'd have to get all these blocks and eat them up and turn them into bits. And if I scan another part, you know, another chunk, it's probably going to have different blocks. So I'm going to have to just like, um, it's going to be a huge pain trying to get all these bits. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just cheat it in. So if you turn the game mode to creative instead of survival, you don't actually need to have the bits in your inventory to be able to place it. See, like right now it's saying, hey, I need all these different bits. But if we turn it to, oh, that's survival. Game mode one, which is creative. Boop. We can just spawn it. I think I'm going to do that. I know it is cheating, but because this is a purely decorative thing and it would be incredibly frustrating to try to get the individual bits, I just don't think it's worth it. I think it's totally okay for something that's just decorative to just cheat it in. So let's do that. Let me figure out exactly where I want to put this thing, because I do have to keep in mind that Ender Minis, of course, like it when it's dark. And of course, they need to be covered as well because they don't like rain. So I need to come up with a good area to put them. There we go. That took a really long time, but it looks so good. Oh my god, look at it. You can see the dog houses there with the, the little bit of like cotton candy filling in the center. There's the storage area, the main like uh, Ender IO panel place. You can see the pathways. This looks weird just because it's actually on a different Y level. So these are meant to be down one block or these up one block. Either one of those would work. But you can see that's the farm right there, the auto farm. I realized I made one sort of mistake when I was building this, and that's that I was thinking I would just put them here temporarily and then break them and then take them where I want them to be. But the problem is the modeling tool is very nice about how you place them. It doesn't matter which direction, like which direction you place it from. You can spin all around and keep placing it. It'll always point in the same direction, which is good. You don't have to worry about rotation. But I'm pretty sure if I break these, now that they're chiseling bits blocks instead of extra bit manipulation, which is what this modeling tool is from, I'm pretty sure that I would have to make sure I place them in the right direction or they wouldn't line up. So you can imagine for all these blocks, that would be a huge pain. I think it'd be really difficult and annoying. So I think I'm actually just gonna leave it here. I know it's not exactly the most ideal location, but I can make it work. I'm gonna have to destroy some of them since these are on the wrong Y level. I think I'll destroy these and maybe move them down and leave the rest on this level. Yeah, I think that'd be good. So I'll kind of like dig out around here, kind of cover up some of the water there. I'll get rid of this farm and the worms. Yeah, I'll make it work. Okay, I sunk this section so it's on the right level. Looks way better. Cleared out the farm, expanded some of the sand here so the water isn't kind of encroaching upon it. And I put a nice little border of acacia blanks around it. Now, I think the next thing I want to think of is how am I going to cover it? Like, I think I want to put glass around it, but what kind of glass? Do I want it to be completely clear? Do I want to do chisel and bits like panes of glass? Or do I want to do solid blocks? I tested a bunch of different glasses and I settled on quite clear glass from Ender.io. Legs, Mike? Oh, good. So the game crashed for a second. Yeah, it's... I really am not much of a fan of most of the glasses in Minecraft. It seems like it's really hard to make glass that looks like glass, but also doesn't just totally obscure your view. I remember I had that problem when I was trying to figure out what to use for the windows in the cat house. So I really want to be able to see the Ender Minis, you know? So I didn't want something that blocked the view, so I just went with this. It was the only clear glass that I could actually find. The rest just obscured it too much. And I really wanted the connected texture so that you wouldn't get this border, you know, all around here, so I couldn't use chisel. Because if you chisel it and then put glass bits down, the connected texture doesn't work. Also, there's like an invisible block here. When I broke some of the glass, it just didn't break right. Oh. Okay. That's how you get those magical blocks to appear? Is this like Mario or something? Anyway, I think I'm going to use this dark oak trap door as my entrance in. So I can put the ender minis in and, you know, feed them or <laughs> whatever I want to do through the hatch. Looks pretty nice. The recipe for this thing is actually broken, by the way. It says just dark oak planks makes the dark oak trap door. But if you do that, it actually makes a different type of trap door. I think uh, this one. 
Yeah, I mixed this one. So I had to just... I made the wrong one accidentally, deleted those, and then just cheated in this one. I added a nice acacia roof to the place to protect it from the sun. Because Enderminis don't like light. But at the same time, I want it to be light enough that I can actually see them. So I just made a nice covering. Still going to be, you know, reasonably bright so I can see, but it's also going to keep the sun out of their eyes. Only the best for my little Endermini babies. I think it's time to put them inside and see how they like it. One thing I am worried about is I'm wondering if they're going to teleport away. I don't know what makes them teleport. I don't know if they behave differently from normal Endermen. Normal Endermen, I think, disappear when it becomes light out, but this might be dark enough that they won't, and they might behave differently because they're Enderminis, and I'm just not sure. If they do teleport out eventually, I think there are things I can do to probably stop that. But let's just try it. Alright, my babies. Boop. It didn't work. There we go. <laughs> hey. You want a friend? You kind of need to move a little bit if you don't mind. Oh, there we go. How do you like it? Just chilling in the trees. Yeah, they're probably going to spend most of the time in the trees because just the way collision works. But sometimes they'll be on land. Maybe sometimes they'll go to the beach and have a swim. I love this so much. I love the Ender Minis. I love this place that I've made. It's beautiful. You know what you all need? You all need a butterfly. There. I hope it isn't trapped down there. Nope, it's free. <laughs> a giant butterfly. This is so cool. Alright, well, I hope you too like it. And I hope the butterfly likes it too. I'll keep checking on them periodically just to make sure they don't teleport out. And if they do, we can try some stuff. Oh, also, by the way, last episode I had devised this system to turn all the canola, well not all the canola, but to turn canola into canola seeds when there's more canola than seeds, and I don't think it works. I've checked it. It seems to always output 15. It never seems to dip down to zero. You see it says power 15. So I don't think it's turning off when it reaches parity. You can see they kind of fluctuate between 14 and 15, both of them, because they're both pretty much maxed out. And if you look, the stack limit is 288, and we're basically at the stack limit, so it keeps alternating because it's going just like one below filled, and then it fills up all the way. But I have made sure that the alternating power isn't an issue. I took out a bunch of canola, a couple hundred into my inventory, to make sure that this would stay at 14, which should turn off the production of the canola seeds, because then the canola is lower than the canola seeds, and I double-checked it, and yeah, it still did not turn off. So for some reason, it doesn't work. A bit disappointed in that. I'm pretty sure the comparator can do what I want it to do. I'm just... I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. I might just be going into the wrong sides or something. It's got different modes, too. Like, right now it's on compare. can also set it to subtract. Not exactly sure what that does precisely, but that didn't work either. But it's fine. As you can see, for now, we're producing more than enough of everything. We're just at the limit for both. So, not an issue. How are my Ender Minis doing? Uh oh. I think one maybe teleported out. 
It did. No. My ender baby didn't like its home. Hmm. Okay, so I got it. <laughs> Looks like the butterfly almost landed on its head. So I do have to devise a way to make them stay put. Let me look into that. Yeah, so there's definitely some sort of a chunk loading issue going on in my Botania base. I think that was the issue more than running out of mana, or not transferring it fast enough. Although I probably also wasn't transferring it fast enough. But you can see this, I mean, my garden is completely collapsed. The mana pool is completely empty. And these are just not firing. And it can fire through water. Shouldn't be a problem, so I'm pretty sure the issue is just that these stopped firing. Which I had happened before. Not these specifically, but some of the other ones around here. Just stopped and would not start again until I destroyed them and reset them. So just to make sure that is the issue and that it can actually fire through water. Let's just double check. So if I rebind this, it should shoot. Yeah, see, it can shoot just fine. So, yeah, some sort of a Batania chunk loading issue. Have I chunk loaded the base? Um, just a part of it. Okay, well, I'll chunk load more of it. Alright, so what I've done is I went ahead and made a... Vinco... Vinco Lotus? It's a functional flower from Batania, and what it does is it makes it so that if any Enderman within its range, which is quite generous, teleports, it will teleport to the location of the flower instead of wherever it would have teleported. So I just put a floating one of those in the center of the little world here. So if they try to teleport out, it should just teleport them just right to the center. And I just added a mana pool right in the center of this. Used one of the elven mana spreaders to go to it. Should be plenty, because I don't, I don't think this thing's going to make much mana. I think it... Or use much mana, rather. I think it only uses mana when it... When it redirects the teleport. So I don't see it using up too much. Although, we'll see. I was definitely wrong with the agricarnations and the bubbles. Especially the bubbles. Okay, so let me go find some new friends. Oh, here's one. Ah, here's another one. Come with me. I'll spirit you away to safety. Get you away from those nasty creepers. That's apparently their main nemesis. Huh, hadn't noticed this before. Oh no! Oh god, poor pig. I'm gonna save you. How long have you been stuck up here? Actually, hmm. I want to put the pig through the liquid, because then it'll turn tiny. Let's see that down here, where it's nice and safe. Oh god, there's <laughs> a bunch of tiny skeletons down here. I don't think that's any relation to the fluid. Boop. Tiny pig. And it stays tiny, too. <laughs> Can you shear a tiny sheep? Do you get tiny wool? Nah, of course you you probably could shear it, but you definitely wouldn't get tiny wool even if you could. Oh, that's a dire wolf. Those things do so much damage, they would most likely kill me in one hit. That's what they've done in the past. Is it another? It's another Ender Mini. Did, did my monarch just escape? How the heck? That's astounding. Okay. I think they'll stay this time. Hey, little fella. <laughs> They're so cute. I hope it's not too bright for them. I don't think so. 
Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I'll be back soon.